It's got a 1000 watt mid drive motor with 160 newton meters of torque. For those of you who don't know much about e-bikes, watt for watt, that's like double the torque of a hub drive motor. So if you're looking to tow something, got a lot of weight to carry, something like this could be a good option. They say we can do about 90 miles of range. It is a 48 volt, 22 amp hour battery pack. Don't worry, we'll test it. Little battery reads, but it does have a torque sensor and full suspension. List price is $3,200. However, it is on sale in the link below this video in the description box, but do not buy the Hokie Cheetah Pro just yet. We need to crack it open, take a closer look at it, and see what this electric bike is made of. Oh shit! <laughs> Scissors went flying. Comes packed up like this. And here's what it looks like when you get out of the box. Wait, where's the frame? All right, I'll stop my dad jokes. Check out that camo, dude. So we've got knobby tread, four inch wide by 26 inch tall tires. These are excellent for off-roading, not just because of the grip, but because of the height. They're good for running stuff over. On the other side of the wheel, we can see a 180 millimeter rotor. Should provide some good stopping power. And it comes with fenders that are plastic, which are lighter than metal fenders and also quieter. Like when rocks are kicking up, tends to be a little bit less clingy on plastic. But the most significant thing about this electric bike is the truck run mid-drive motor. Super pumped to see how torquey this thing is. And it is running full suspension with a four link suspension on the rear. Appears to be an air shock. The BR-AA8, nothing fancy, but should be pretty good. We will be running hydraulic brakes courtesy of Gemma GA1000. Same exact 180 millimeter rotor on rear and a quick release on the rear tire, which is actually pretty rare. As you can see down here, there is no motor on the rear hub. The motor's up there. Many pros and cons, which we'll talk about in this video. One of the pros is you get less unsprung mass on the rear wheel. Having the motor sprung weight and center and low results in better handling, less unsprung mass. Comes with the rear rack and an integrated tail light. I can see the wire running to the battery. And speaking of battery, let's check it out. Oh snap, dude, this thing is dual battery. Holy crap, I didn't even know that till right now. They do give you a little air pump here. Ugh, I'm really digging the cheetah camouflage. Let's find the keys for those batteries. Nope, definitely not in there. We do have an owner's manual. Pedals, which we will be needing. Guess the keys are on the handlebars. Ugh, there they go. One set, two sets. Let's see what we're working with here. Ugh, this is a pretty light battery. This must be the big boy down here. Pop on up. Come on, I gotta get this thing out of the box. Come on. The entire weight of the bike is 83 pounds. Eight and a half pounds of that is from the first battery. Second battery weighs four pounds, four and a half pounds roughly. So you get about 13 pounds of batteries here. The main frame integrated one is 48 volt, 15 amp hour, 720 watt hours. So if you're just going for like a shorter ride, you could just roll with this. But if you want a little extra range, you can roll with this 48 volt, seven amp hour, 336 watt hours of energy. It adds up to a total of 22 amp hours. What's 720 plus 336 watt hours? So this battery is actually relatively small. And one interesting thing about this bike, the way it's set up is, check it out. There's actually more room in the frame there so if you did want to upgrade this thing to a bigger battery well you might be able to squeeze a little bit more in there here's the seat we're gonna be rolling on it is wide has some dimples sticking up a little bit it's called the velo plush we'll see if it is a little handle back here too see how heavy it is so of course, whenever a bike has rear suspension, it usually has front suspension also, and that's exactly what we have here. You can adjust the preload on the left and on the right shoulder. There is a basic lock or open switch. Let's check out the handlebars. Handlebars are basically flat, straight across. We get round rubber grips, controls. Bell. And the GD06 display. GD. Not sure what this is actually. Seven gears on the Shimano shifter, which will be important since this is a mid drive. The power is sent through here back to here. So you have like a transmission. We'll talk more about that later, but we do have a throttle on the right, quarter twist throttle. And on the bottom of the GD06 is a USB charger. Gemma hydraulic brakes. Just the levers seem fine. Oh, get on there. We also get a quick release for the front wheel. Makes it easy to pop that front wheel on and off if you need to take it off for transportation. Although they do make racks for the rear of cars or trucks that you can actually load these things up on. My favorite one is in the description box down below this video. I actually drove one of these heavy bikes from LA to Seattle. Fender's on and we'll check that light out soon. And it's about time to get those batteries on, but I forgot to charge them. What kind of charge are we rolling with here? Pokey braided. Will it be a pokey charge rate? Not bad, three amps. So we can only charge one battery at a time with this output. 15 amp hours divided by three amps. That'd be about five hours to charge this one. From completely empty to completely full. And then over here, seven amp hours divided by three. So for about a little over two for that one. You could always pick up an extra one of these. They're not very expensive at all. If you want to charge both batteries at the same time. Fortunately, it looks like it's about half charged as they ship it. Let's go ahead and pop it in there. 
lock it up. And oops, I actually forgot to put the pedals on. So here's what you get, they are metal. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up. So hold the M button, there we go. So the GD06 is a basic non-color display. Looks like we get our power. Technically our energy, the battery life up here in terms of, looks like it'll probably be 10 bars. We are on five, nice. And boom, it shows us the power output of the motor. I love to see that, especially on mid drives. And we can adjust our pedal assist here from zero on up to five. Odometer, tap that M button, shows us trip. Time. Not sure what that's gonna be. Maybe amps, and obviously speed front and center. Speaking of speed, looks like there's a speed sensor right there. I'll show you the gears and stuff in here in a moment. But first, let me show you what I look like getting on this bike with a seat on minimum height. I am six foot five with an inseam of 34. So here's my stand over height, a little bit of room there. And once I'm on the bike, here's what my pedal stroke would look like. Seat on minimum height. There is a quick release lever to easily adjust the seat height. So I'll go ahead and throw it on maximum seat height. And with the seat on maximum seat height, I'll hop up on here. Here's what my pedal stroke looks like on maximum seat height. It's about right for a six foot five dude. And here's the approximate riding position with the seat on max. 83 pound electric bicycle definitely has a little bit of weight to it. Let's feel out that rear suspension a bit. Oh yeah, feels nice. Definitely has good travel to it. Relatively soft, front suspension soft. Won't be doing any hardcore jumps on this thing. But for some basic trail riding, this should be a pretty decent setup. So the gears on a mid-drive motor are a lot more important than a hub drive motor. You're actually gonna be using these a lot. All of the power from the mid-drive motor is sent through this chain to the gears. This is basically your transmission. So we have a Shimano seven gears and a basic turny Shimano derailleur to adjust them. So on a hub drive motor, which this bike is not, the hub back here basically just spins the rear wheel. It is completely independent from the power you put in through your legs. Not the same on a mid drive. All the power is sent through this chain and that's one of the ways you get a lot more torque to the rear wheel. So check it out. I have it on pedal assist one. I'm gonna twist the throttle just a bit and watch how this works. It's gonna turn the chain. It's sending all that power from the mid drive through the chain. It turns the entire crank. See that? So through the magic of mechanical leverage using this gear and the gears on the back, you can get a lot more torque down to that rear wheel. Excellent for pulling stuff, excellent for climbing, helps you get more efficiency out of your battery if you use your gears properly. So I'm just gonna run the motor just a little bit here and show you an example of changing the gears. You have to be a little bit careful about changing the gears under load, so check it out. As I give it power and changing gears, you can, you can, it's possible to tear up your gears a little bit there. See what I'm talking about? You give it too much power as the gear is changing. So you kind of want to treat it like a manual transmission. Let off the throttle as, as you shift, just give it like a little bit of power. It does have a torque sensor, so you can put power down through the pedals and it will give you power based on how hard you're pressing on the pedals, but you also have the throttle here and it will show us how much watts the motor is putting out. Oh, this thing appears to be pretty exciting, pretty torquey bike. Let's throw this thing on pedal assist five, see what it will do top speed wise under no load, top gear. Throttle tops us out at 20, so this is a class three speed setup bike. All right, dudes, let's take the Hokey Cheetah Pro out for a ride. We're gonna start the Strava up so we can track our official range on these dual batteries. I almost thought about not bringing this one because I know I'm not gonna need it. I am super excited to see what kind of torque this mid-drive motor has. And I did find the GD06 manual online. So we'll get into the settings there later. Oh shoot, I almost forgot to put air in the tires. Inflate to 20, we're on six. <laughs> That'll do it. Real quick, I think I forgot to tell you guys. Check it out, it does have a rear light, and when I grab it, it is a brake light. And here's what the headlight looks like. Definitely lights some stuff up a little bit. So the very first test we're gonna do on this bike is the 20% grade, which I'm pretty pumped about because torque is the name of the game on mid-drive motors. So let's just try this thing on pedal assist one, gear one, and gears do matter. We're gonna try the throttle only. So this is putting all the power through the first cassette on pedal assist one. Well, it's giving 450 watts of power pedal assist one. Now, I don't know if that is limited on the throttle or not. Let's pop on down here and now crank this thing up to pedal assist five, starting from a stop and then give it full throttle. Let's see if that actually gives it any more power or not. So no, it, it, it seems like it's giving the same amount of power, 450 watts, pulling us straight up to 20% grade. Feels like a pretty torquey motor. And let's go ahead and crank it on to like gear number seven and see how that shakes things up. Oh no. <laughs> so did you hear the gears there? You gotta be really careful. These mid-drive motors can tear up your gears. So just to prove a point here, now it is on the highest gear, gear number seven. I'm gonna put on pedal assist five and just start rolling here. This is a high speed gear. Let's see if it can actually pull it up 
So look, it's, it's, see what I mean? You have to use the right gear on a mid-drive motor. So if you don't wanna mess with gears, maybe a hub drive is what you're looking for, but you will get more efficiency and more torque with a mid-drive motor. So back on gear number one, let's go ahead and see if we can make it underneath the ear. And we have a torque sensor on this bike. So just putting in a little bit of power here, man. This thing dominates. So let's go ahead and bump this thing down, down to pedal assist zero. Absolutely no power input at all. This is a heavy electric bike on gear number one. I can see the GD display. We'll get into the settings there a little bit later. Make sure we have everything maximized. Turn up the brightness. I can see it. Let's throw on the polarized lenses. Can you see it? Yes, it does not affect the ability to see the screen with the polarized sunglasses. And let's go ahead and try pedal assist one now. So this is a torque sensor. The harder you press on the pedals with the torque sensor, the more power it's gonna give you. We're on pedal assist one. One. and it's a very intuitive feeling pedal assist sensor i can tell already let's go ahead put this on gear number three generally mid-drive torque sensors are like more responsive torque sensors in general than hub drive torque sensors from my experience so let's bump this on pedal assist too i could immediately tell uh, a big boost in power there i saw it show 600 watts there for a moment and yeah this torque sensor is nice and it should be i mean this is not a cheap electric bike right pedal assist three let's see what happens here from a stop we're starting on gear number five so really i should have downshifted a couple gears there for maximizing our efficiency on the battery but plenty of power and now on pedal assist three i'm gonna go ahead and bump it back down to one let's just see what it'll do on throttle only on one if there's like a max speed or where it cuts us off how the characteristics are looks like this will take us up to 20 where it starts reducing our power and it doesn't matter if i put it on five the maximum it will give us on throttle only is 20 miles an hour so it appears this bike is set up a class three style where it will top you out on throttle only at 20 and then we'll see what it takes us up to let's put it on pedal assist four now and use that torque sensor just a little bit so that this torque sensor i feel like i might actually be encouraged to actually pedal this bike a little bit today it appears as i'm changing gears it actually cuts power, which is a wonderful feature because as I was saying, you need to be careful to not tear up your gears. So on pedal assist four, let's actually start from a slower speed here and start pedaling. And then we're gonna shift gears. And yeah, it, it shifts, it actually cuts power as though like you're pressing in the clutch on a manual transmission, reduces your power momentarily to help you prevent uh, tearing up your gears. Wonderful feature to have on a mid-drive bike. And another thing to take into consideration with a mid-drive bike is, well, I just came to a stop and I'm on gear number seven. That is not an ideal gear to start out from a stop. It'll do it. We already saw we can almost climb the 20% grade, but you know, you really want to start in like a lower gear. The only way to downshift after you come to a stop is kind of <laughs> like this. The chain has to be rotating. I mean, you could also just kind of roll forward like this and downshift. There must be a sensor on there somewhere for knowing when I'm shifting gears. Anyway, let's get rolling here. So gear number one, let's go ahead and just use the throttle. And now what if I shift? Oh yeah, check it out. It'll cut power when I press that shifter. That's awesome. For like a half second or something, less than that. Nice. So I just threw my GPS up here so we can verify the speedometer is accurate. Let's go ahead and ride this thing off-road just a little bit. It is full suspension. Rear suspension is uh, nice and supple. Probably not the most premium rear shock, but for some light trail riding, it is set it pretty well and it really isolates you from the bumps good geometry on the four link suspension and the front fork also it's cushy now you probably could bottom this stuff out if you uh, push it too hard so we'll go ahead and shift it up a couple gears post this five now and get behind the prius here and shift some gears see what it'll let us go up to with the torque sensor so it appears it is cutting us off at 20 miles an hour even while pedaling yeah it's kind of reducing our power right around 20 21 miles an hour so we're gonna have to get into the settings there and see about increasing that. Not that 20 is bad. I mean, 20 is fine. A little bit of lane splitting on this motorcycle. <laughs> get behind the Maserati here. So let's give it a zero to 20 acceleration run. I don't really know what gear to put it in for sure. I'll start on three here. And let's do full throttle GPS here. Go. Oh, I weigh 200 pounds and it's showing 500, 600 watts. Nine. 15. 18 and 20. So that was gear three. I could shift down to gear one, but I don't know if that'll take us up to 20. Should get a little bit stronger acceleration. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Ready, go. So it shows 600 watts. Kind of bouncing around there a bit. 10, 12, 15. And we're pretty much out of gear now. So you see what I mean? We get a little bit stronger launch, but 
the maximum speed we can hit is 15.5, 16 miles an hour on year one. So, you know, I could shift gears while I'm going, but then that's gonna, you know, cut the power, like a really poor automatic gearbox on a old car or something. Check it out, we'll try it. So gear one, ready, go. Gives us 500 watts, 600 watts. And then we'll shift gears now. See, it cuts power. So that's kind of, we almost had a little premature brake test. Don't worry, I saw that coming long before they did. So as I mentioned, I did download the GD manual, the GD06 manual that is. So if we hold this plus and minus button here, we can get into the settings. Oh, well, we should be able to. If we can't get into the settings. Are we locked out of this GD display, bro? Well, it is actually not loading the menu settings. Hmm. Well, I have tried like every combination, including all three combinations. I, I don't know how to do it. Get out the good old user manual, see if that has any tips. Does not say from what I can see. If anybody knows, drop a comment in the comment section. There's gotta be a way to make this thing go faster than 20, right? Well, since we're gonna be limited to 20 miles an hour, that means we're gonna get exceptional range likely because once you start going over 20, the wind resistance and extra power required to hit those speeds, that really takes a toll on your range. But don't worry, we're not gonna take it easy on this thing. I'm gonna go and try and climb that hill. So we already know this bike's gonna likely kill it out here on the sand so we'll go ahead and start from a stop here pedal assist five so as i was saying 26 inch tall by four inch wide tires they are pretty much the gold standard for riding on you know stuff like the sand and let's just go ahead and see if this thing will climb this hill in gear one oh, i may have overestimated its abilities <laughs> Ooh. So I feel the motor kind of like saying, no, don't do that, bro. Kind of fun to watch this thing work though. Oh, I'm burying myself, bro. All right, let's get back on the standard circuit here. To be fair, that is like an absolute most extreme possible conditions. I mean, loose sand, uphill. Let's see what kind of torque this thing has for, you know, some realistic torque applications. So yeah, just chilling out here, cruising along in the sand. It's showing 450 watts. You know, a lot of bikes would have a very difficult time doing this. We're picking up speed, man, 10 miles an hour here. Here, cruising along absolutely no problem and I'm not even pedaling this bike I'll go ahead and see how this torque sensor feels cruising along here just a bit let's see if it'll give me more power if I if I pedal it nah it's still showing like five six hundred watts kind of bouncing around there but we're definitely gonna put these batteries to the test here see what kind of range we get out of here full suspension let's go ahead and see if we can do this without crashing Whoa, almost lost it but, uh Navi tread definitely helps more than uh some smoother tires. I definitely crashed if I got here. Smooth tires earlier this week. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, let's see if we could go through this sand up this hill, soft back sand, not lose our balance and give it a little bit of pedaling there and going up the hill. Um, this is some pretty gnarly conditions to try and tackle with an electric bike and eh, it's doing pretty darn well, I'd have to say. So the motor on this bike is rated at 1,000 watts according to the website. I have not really seen this thing peak out more than about 650 or 700 watts. I don't know if there's a way to like dial up the current on the controller in there somehow. Let's go ahead and just hit this, see how it does. Give it a little bit of pedal assistance here and yeah, it's doing just fine. So this is pretty uh, bumpy conditions here and the full suspension on this bike is pretty good for some like light trail riding it's definitely insulating me from like all the bumps i feel super comfortable riding over this you know not some premium suspension but definitely uh feels nice just for some light shell riding wouldn't push it too hard though wouldn't be using this thing for like downhill mountain biking or something but hey say you want to go hunting or something pull a deer out of the woods something like that this might be a good kind of bike for that man it's got the camouflage it's got the mid-drive motor for pulling high torque applications wonder if it could pull a deer yeah, that thing is about as big as a deer maybe i should see if i can pull it glad we don't have like some sort of a uh, sleigh or something let's go ahead and max out the suspension see how it does going down something a little bit tougher all good man it's a pretty capable bike i'm gonna just throttle only from a stop here not pedaling it can get itself going, man. And we're accelerating now. Three miles an hour, four miles an hour. Better not get hit by this wave, though. I don't know what the IPX rating is on this thing. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. So I was gonna try out the California Incline. Well, I have no problem doing it because it is only a 12% grade. It's 85 feet tall. But I kind of just want to run the bikes through the same kind of circuit. Although we did go out there on the sand quite a bit more than usual on this bike. So while pedaling, I'm gonna go ahead and bump it down a couple gears. It cuts my power and I'm gonna give it throttle on gear one full throttle gear one is giving 
400 watts of power, 375, 375, 375. So the motor kind of tends to deliver like a lower amount of power than I would expect since they claim it to be a 1000 watt motor. But it is torquey. We'll try the brakes at the bottom of this hill and full throttle at the bottom of the California incline here giving 400 watts on gear one, 400 watts, roughly 400 watts that is. Getting us up to 14 and now it's dropping us at 300 watts. So it's kind of bouncing around like about 230 to 184 watts of power. So really interesting to see how this bike is performing on gear one. Seems to be topping out right about 14. So I'm gonna bump it a gear. Oh yeah, I forgot that gear kind of tops out at 14 or 15, doesn't it? <laughs> so there's your performance on the California incline. So we're gonna go ahead and run it back down there and try the brakes on the way down. So we are limited at 20 miles an hour, but on this downhill, it's not helping us at all. I can actually get it up to about 22, 23, so faster than this bike was intended on going. And we're gonna go ahead and see how these hydraulic disc brakes work. So they are Gemma hydraulic disc brakes. The levers feel nice in my hand. They are on 180 millimeter rotors, so they actually bite pretty good. So the bike does weigh, what, about one, uh, 83 pounds. So let's say you get yourself into a situation where you need to stop quickly from about 20 miles an hour, pull on those brake levers. Let's not lock up that front wheel on the sand. Yeah, man, they're fine. So let's head on home and see what the final range is. And along the way, I'll share my final thoughts on this electric bicycle. Check out this unicycle. Dang, look at the skill. That is awesome, man. Wow, that looks dangerous. That is some tail, man. So, I mean, if you're looking for something, you know, that's gonna have high torque, mid-drive is really the way to go. Either that or, you know, all-wheel drive. But ultimately, I think mid-drive is probably better for high torque applications. And this is a pretty punchy, Torquey motor. Now it does seem to pretty much cap us out at right at 750 watts. I never saw the watt meter show more than 750 watts. And I have to say, you know, that's pretty much what the power feels like. But you know, mid-drive power in combination with using these gears, I'm able to get some pretty darn good torque. Obviously we saw how good it did out on the sand. But if you want to go faster than 20, I'm not sure if this bike can go faster than 20. Obviously with this camouflage paint, this could possibly be like a good hunting electric bike. Probably, you know, tow a serious load on the rear of this thing. Especially if you don't want to go too fast, you know, say you're just out hunting, you know, for a deer, you want to pull a deer back, you have a trailer. This would probably be an exceptional choice for something like that. Torque sensor on this thing is nice. I'm digging it. It's pretty responsive. And batteries are showing eight out of 10 right now. So we're gonna have to measure the voltage. Current MSRP on this bike is right around $3,000. So this is not a cheap electric bike, but there may be a discount code down below this video in the description box. If you did click on that link and then buy through that link, that would give you the best price to also help support my reviews here on tail happy tv and of course i greatly appreciate your support if you're thinking about getting this bike all around not too shabby let's head on home see what the final range is all right dude just rolling back into the neighborhood here 17.6 miles going on 18 here soon hour and 36 minutes ride time average speed a little bit under 11 miles an hour which makes sense i was out there playing in the sand quite a bit today also this bike tops out at 20 battery is showing well i guess i should say battery since i'm running dual batteries it's showing seven out of ten bars now riding out there in the sand definitely did not help our range at all but what did help our range is optimizing our gears with that mid-drive motor making things a little more efficient out there then also keeping the speeds under 20. you're always going to get more range when you're going slower we'll get inside throw this thing on the voltmeter display claims 7 out of 10 bars multimeter says little battery reads 48.7 volts other one should be the same big battery reads also 48 0.7 volts. Well, that's kind of actually more like 60, 50 percent ish in that range. Look at the chart. Not bad. If you guys do want to grab one, buy through the link below this video in the description box. You'll get the best price. Also help support Tabby TV. However, if this is not the kind of electric bicycle you're looking for, watch this video next. Catch you over there.